Welcome to phase four. Right now, you are in possession of a set of digital assets. You have your brand name and your accounts. You have a Google account, Instagram, a Facebook page, YouTube account, which I haven't done any modification to, a Twitter account. What we're about to cover is an additional set of equipment. What we're going to throw down now is adding in a website or a blog. Now, my preference is WordPress. There are other ways and places and means to host this, but I like WordPress, so I'm going to show you this. Right at the top, theme decisions. Don't get too hung up. You can spend an eternity looking around this. Now, given that the decisions I've made with my brand, the Prinonier, is very much going to be around the visual because we're now looking at selling a tattoo we're selling a temporary tattoo we're selling a visual of object and artifact i'm going to go with cubic it looks to be the most visual but i can make a, an alternative now here's one of the other decisions that you're going to need to address domain name versus subdomain strategic decision remembering that you are a student doing a subject but if you want to be able and use the subject as the opportunity to create something that you go on with now in the case of my particular generated brand we go back to name check and you'll note that I've kept name check open all the way through here for this purpose of being able to look at the different domains that are available. Now according to this, Printane info isn't available. Whereas if we go to one of the domain registrars, it is. Shop around. Always shop around. Now for the purpose of this demonstration, in a moment I'm going to pause because I am going to buy the, the domain and I'll buy it off screen because you're not getting to see my credit card number on a video. But what I also want you to look at is in terms of pricing and decision making. The different brands, if you want to be very Australian, there's a distinct, you know, I won't say penalty, but there's a price difference. Each of these prices gives you an opportunity to think, why do I want that domain? What is going to be useful there? And some of the high-end ones, Clothing. Now, if I was a fashion label, I'd be straight for that because it's 70 bucks Australian. So I think this is currently billing us in uh, US dollars. Uh, no, it's in Australian. So five bucks Australian, Printane.info. The .info domains are on the cheap at the moment. I've bought a couple uh, around the five buck mark. So this gives you a choice. You don't have to use it. And what I'm going to do to continue through is I will just use our current uh, domain. So it will cost to map to here. This will be $17 a year. So basically now looking at 22 bucks for a setup here. You don't have to. You can if you want to. But the other thing is as soon as you incur this cost, so the moment I hit map it, I buy the domain and I hit map it, I've now spent $22. I need to make that back. So one of the things you want to be doing and very mindful of in these setup processes is it's been free all the way so far. As soon as you start incurring costs, you've got to keep a track and record of those costs so that you can start working out when are you going to turn a profit on this venture. Now, if we take the case of the temporary domain, the temporary tattoos, we'll need to actually create artifacts. We'll need to build, have stuff made. Costs will be incurred. So cost tracking is important. I also haven't got you to track your time at this point in, time in the process, but when you're doing this for the money, is you need to work out what your hourly rate is and how long you've spent. 
So these videos are around 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes a piece. So by the end of a sequence of videos, you'll spend an hour. Let's be conservative about this. Let's make it an hour. How much was that worth? How much you now need to get back? If you've got a job, you know what your hourly rate is worth. How much have you spent in your setup times? So we'll continue with the free domains. And we'll just grab you a free for life. Again, different choices, different options, different things that you can think about what do you want to do. I'm sticking with the free for this one. Now, as it happens, I run my own website. I have a pre-existing hosting arrangement, so I could host up my own subject, host up my, my own materials, my own domain, at no greater cost, because I've already paid for the rights to host 20 of these things. But that's also then part of my annual cost, is I have to divide my annual hosting fees by 20 and work out how much this domain will contribute. So again, we're back to what's our user, our email addresses. Two, three, four. And we now have a block. We have a WordPress block. So in our asset set now, we have a blog as well as everything else. Which means we have a functional decision. Where are we driving this operation from? Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or the block. We've got four assets that can drive the platform. So we have this decision. There's a lot of customization. It's really useful to go through and step through each of the customization options. Uh, always start with the My Profile. Always start with your upgrades. Again, another account verification requirement. Try whenever you're working on setting up accounts to have your email client open in the background so you can instantly verify and get straight into action. So here you've got the back end of a WordPress site. Play around with it, experiment, work out what you want to do in terms of settings. I would recommend actually having a, uh, a real name or a consistent username policy, having a an established identity, a pseudonym, or a real name. And by by when I say real name, the name by which you are known, not necessarily the name on your birth certificate. If you are consistently known by a name other than that which appears on your legal documents, that's your real name. I don't care what Facebook says. But basically, the branded name by which you are reasonably known by. And there are many cultural traditions, including, again, being Anglo-Celtic, of people having a name by which they're known and a name which is their official uh, legal name. So you want to set this up. You want to be in place. Again, you're seeing that you're consistently using images. You are consistently seeing that you're needing to have a common and uh, sort of a central I'm just working through the gravatar um, in the background. The branding decision uh, come thick and fast, so the brand changes. If you decide you're going to change your logo, change your image, uh, particularly yeah, if you use a photo of yourself, you take a photo. When you decide, oh, I'm going to update my photo, you then basically we'll need to go through and update your different accounts if you're using a consistent image. So here we have the Gravatar, which is now used for uh, commenting on blogs, engaging other platforms. So you have your profile set up. We have uh, these elements in place. So we now have a blog. The last step I'm going to get you to do is I'm going to get you to go to the site called If This Then That, ifttt.com. Now I signed up for a profile just earlier, so I will be signing in rather than signing up. 
So off screen there was a profile sign up. Uh, would work like that, wouldn't it? Remember, make mistakes, feel free to make mistakes. This is the other thing. Right now, one of the things I didn't mention is that when you're doing the sequence of setups, is it's entirely possible that you will forget, you'll get something wrong. So the if this then that, and I'm just going to pause the video for a second. Right, and the off screen resetting my password just for security reasons, because you can never tell which site will go and send your password to you in your email in plain text, and which site will go and give you a reset button. So the if this then that, sign up for it, and then look at three parts here. The first part is channels. This is going to be an absolute shopping list of social media sites. You do not need all of them. There are 274 channels listed here. You won't necessarily need you know, more than five even. But what this site, if this then that, does is that it allows you to connect one site to another. So you have this opportunity here, and I'm going to demonstrate because I have a series of accounts what I'd like is that if I'm going to drive, really drive my operation from Instagram. So we'll go back to the channels and we will search for Instagram. What you need to do as a startup is you need to connect if this then that to your Instagram. So I'm going to authorize this to connect. What I want to be able to do is I would like that whenever I post on Instagram, I'd like that to post to my Twitter account. I'd like to have the two of them connected together. So I need to connect my Twitter channel. So I now have an automated system whereby whenever I take an Instagram photo, it will connect me straight across. It will post to Twitter. The other aspect, as I mentioned before, that we have these different uh, the profile pictures. So we do a little search um, amongst the recipe. So you can go and connect. Instagram, so when you you can change your Twitter account automatically by the Instagram photos you take. You can build your own recipe, and I'm going to just build one of these uh, briefly now, just to demonstrate, is I want to create a recipe, and this is this step-by-step -step process. If this, so in my particular case, I want it to be if this Instagram, I take a photo on Instagram, I'd like to have an archive, I'd like to have a metric, create a trigger, then that. Now, I know I have, courtesy of Google, I have a calendar. So I'm going to quickly look for a calendar. And here we have the Google Calendar, which I just need to, again, connect because it's a setup. Once you've made these connections, these recipes are much faster. We now have a Google Calendar connected. I want it to add an event. Every time I post, I want it to remember, I want there to be a note on there, created at. So I want the caption and the URL of the photo I take into my Google Calendar. Okay. 
Now, what this recipe will do for me is that when I take a photo, post it to Instagram, it will automatically make a note in my calendar. So if I set myself an objective of posting on every weekday, I can review my calendar to see that whether in fact I have posted to Instagram each weekday. I can also set myself the objective of post, say, morning and afternoon every, every second day. So I want a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, morning, afternoon posting schedule. I set myself that as my goal, my objective, my target. My metric then becomes my calendar. I can measure, did I meet my internal goal? But I can do that by simply looking at my calendar. So if this then that is a very powerful tool, we'll probably do a bit more about it uh, as a separate video. But I want you to start here, get an account, and then start looking around what are the possibilities that you can use this for. So this fourth phase, you've got your setup in place, your assets are underway, you now have a set of core accounts to use during the semester. What comes from this is you've now got to actually use them. And we're going to talk in a different video about how to create content, how to create assets, saleable items, brands and products that you can use these for. So you can use your assets of your Instagram as a promotional account. You can use it to promote a product that exists. But for now, basically play around if this then that find things, create things, look at recipes, look at the channels that are available. Have a bit of fun with it.